Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, once again, I rise disappointed because once again, we were here for a long day where we took up many bills, some on some really good issues. But once again, not one bill to address the spread of COVID-19 head on. And today, outside of this building, our flags are flying at half mast because unfortunately, we crossed a devastating milestone with 10,000 Michiganders who have lost their lives. Thank you. 10,000 Michiganders, our friends and our family and our neighbors are gone. And it's really hard when I hear stories of people who have lost loved ones or people who are sick. And the more that I talk to colleagues in this chamber, everybody knows somebody or has lost somebody or has gotten it themselves or is going through it right now. And it's hard to get in the mindset of working through bills that don't relate to the crisis that's facing us right now. And there's this narrative out there that you're either on the side of public health or you're on the side of small business. And that is incredibly, incredibly frustrating. My sister, who's 22, graduated from college and like many college students, her plans were all canceled. Her internship fell apart. She didn't have a job after college. So she's been working in a restaurant. Uh, and even when they were still open, they still are open in Pennsylvania, she wasn't making nearly as much as she was uh, before the pandemic hit because people were afraid to come in. And then she got COVID. So she's been quarantining at home not making the $2 an hour plus tips that she usually makes. And she's young, she'll be okay. And very candidly, she and I were talking, if she gets in a bind, our mom will help her, I'll help her out. But she works with a lot of people who are older and are vulnerable and have families themselves who can't afford that, who can't afford two weeks off of work, who can't afford to get sick and are making this choice between their life and their livelihood. And what we know right now here in Michigan is medical experts are telling us the efforts we're making are working. Cases are starting to come down. And knowing that when medical experts tell us this is working, it should be on all of us to say, okay, what do we need to do to make sure that everybody can afford to do the things we're asking them to do to get through to the other side of this thing? Because there is another side of this. In the UK, people are starting to get vaccinated right now. The FDA put out their report of Pfizer's vaccine and it's incredibly promising. And I just encourage with four session days left, four left, that we take this seriously. And it's hard to look across the hall and realize a COVID outbreak has canceled work here. They're out for the week. And we don't even have a contingency plan to keep our house in order here in this building, but people are relying on this legislative body to make decisions. I introduced a resolution 229 days ago that would allow the legislature to meet remotely to continue its work if it becomes unsafe to meet here in person. That hasn't happened on the other side of this building. The work is ground to a halt and we have four session days left to address this. People are begging us to address this head on, to bring cases down and to get people desperately needed relief so they can pay their bills, so they can do the right thing, so they can stay home if they need to and not have to choose between their life or their livelihood. So I'll be up here every session day until we do take up legislation to respond to this crisis that's in front of us because that's the phone calls that I'm getting every single day. And I hope we don't go four session days without addressing this, despite dozens of bills that come across our desk. Thank you.